Over the last couple of days, I followed Andre Kapasi's Let's Build GPT from Scratch tutorial. And in about 10 hours of work, I was able to build a GPT from scratch by myself. It was such a great experience. And if, like me, you don't have much else to do with your weekend, then I would really recommend this as a weekend project. The idea of this tutorial is that you have this data set, which is a collection of Shakespeare's full works, and you're trying to build a GPT that will do next token prediction on this data set. So what that means is if you give it the start of a sentence, like soft, who comes here, it's supposed to try and predict what's going to come next. And then you can use that to generate new Shakespeare. So you can just start with like the start of a sentence and just let it complete it and see what happens. Spoiler, you don't end up with Shakespeare. I mean, look at this. My lord, but truly friend, rich of the poliness and wilt tends sure. I mean, yeah, it's not Shakespeare, but it is kind of in the right ballpark, which is very exciting because this is a model that you can just train yourself in a Google Collab. GPT is just this, but like much bigger and not just on Shakespeare, but all of the internet. So it was kind of cool to just see how it works for real. The thing with the original tutorial is that he just goes through and codes. And so, you know, in the end, it's like you're just watching a video of him coding. But of course, if you want to practice, you need to write the code yourself. At the very end, I gutted out the whole thing and I um, had to try and fill in the whole thing myself. And that was very helpful. So I've made a copy of the collab and I've made that available here as well. So if you want to go through and do that same kind of exercise, this is available for you. How much do you need to know to be able to do this yourself? I think surprisingly little. I think though it is really worthwhile to know some theory behind Transformers first before doing this. Uh, that's just because it's a little hard to like understand what's going on at the theoretical level at the same time as trying to understand the weeds of the actual code. So I'd recommend just firstly trying to understand the big picture and then going into the code. So there's some really, really good videos for that. I will link them down below. On top of that, you'll also need some basic Python as well as a bit of knowledge of PyTorch. Although to be honest, you could get a lot of that from a couple of tutorials. Um, in particular, you need to understand how to use arrays and you also need to know how to use the NN module. I would say just get into it and then when you don't understand something, look that up. I didn't actually do this entire tutorial over two days. I did it over three. And that's because the first day, all I did was I watched over the entire video and tried to understand the prerequisite parts. And I think that that made a huge difference the next day. I just finished the first proper day of this tutorial and I feel way better about it today than I did yesterday when I was just watching the video. Because the first time I watched it, there were so many bits I just completely didn't understand. And I was really worried that today it was going to be a bit of a struggle. But then I guess having slept on it and also having understood the sort of overall context, today was much, much easier. Like I could actually understand what each of the bits was for. And even better, I made myself like pause the video after he explained a bit of code and then I try and reproduce it and like it was a bit hard but I was able to do it and it was great because it made me realize that there's nothing actually magical going on right like all of it is pretty straightforward as long as you break it down and you understand what this bit of code is trying to do in context so yeah I just feel a whole lot better about it today than I did yesterday by the final day of the tutorial, I really surprised myself by how much easier it seemed now compared to when I started. So this morning I finished the rest of the tutorial and it was not that bad. But now what I want to do to try and like test myself and make sure that I remember it, I'm going to just get rid of most of the code except for the names of classes and functions and methods. And then I'm going to try and fill in the blanks. Um, so I'm not going to try and do this without ever looking at the answer. I will have that open as well. And, you know, if I need to and I can't figure it out, I'll look at that. But I'll try to minimize it so that I can like stretch myself to figure out like what it should be doing. I think this will be educational. Look, this is my finished code. I haven't tried to run it yet. I'm pretty sure there'll be little bugs here and there that I have to fix to get it to run properly. But I think it's just about right because I've been comparing it against the actual code 
And yeah, um, mostly it looks the same. Um, yeah, I'm really, really, really surprised that I've managed to do this. I, like before this, had a fairly okay grasp of like the theory of what kind of goes on inside of one of these large language models. Like, yeah, I knew that there were attention heads and I knew that there were a bunch of dropout layers and a bunch of uh, layer norms and things like that. Like I knew that what all the ingredients kind of were, but I was a little bit vague on exactly how they stack up together. But it's so cool to have just written exactly where all of those things have to go in sequence to produce this um, code that produces like this kind of gibberish Shakespeare-like text. Uh, this diagram that I drew was completely invaluable to me and I'm sure completely useless to absolutely anyone else, but it was very, very helpful to like exactly draw out where each of these things is going to go and how they add up together to um, get the final thing. I don't think I would have been able to write all of this code without the prep of like going through the tutorial and like really writing out loads of notes. Um, but even so, I'm just so shocked that this went way better than I expected. Of course, I was looking at the reference code as well, but I was shocked how much I could write without having to look at it. Um, and I think that's because this was actually a really good tutorial. Like he really breaks it down and I highly recommend it. It is so empowering to just feel like there is actually no magic inside of an LLM. It's all fairly straightforward things if you can break down every individual piece and then put them together in the right order. That's all there is to it.